Hello, I will now start the debrief of the uh, ESO recommendations on treatment of hepatitis C 2016. The recommendations were presented yesterday evening in Paris. We are still in Paris at the special conference organized by ASLD and ESO on treatment of hepatitis C. And uh, I will summarize briefly the context of the publication of these recommendations and the main uh, advances that have been made in these recommendations. The context is the advent of a lot of new HCV therapies. Uh, they are all based on the new direct acting antiviral drugs. Three drugs were approved in 2014, the Fosbivir, the Clatasvir, and Simeprevir. Two uh, fixed dose combinations were approved in 2015. This is a Fosbivir, Lidipasvir, and the combination of Ambitasvir, Paritaprevir, boosted by Ritonavir, and Dazabuvir. And this year, a few weeks ago, two new combinations were approved. In Europe, they include uh, Grazoprevir, Albasvir, fixed dose combination, another fixed dose combination, Sofosvivir, Valpatasvir. It is very clear that with these new combinations available, changes in the epidemiology, changes also in the political environment uh, that accompanies the, the, the development of new HIV drugs and, and, and screening strategies, it was important to provide a very efficient and very uh, synthetic guidance for people to treat HIV infection every day, and this is what we aim at doing uh, with the panel that, uh, with me, organized and put together these new uh, recommendations. We understand that our target is Europe, European countries, which have different access to drugs, different reimbursement strategies, different environments, and our target is also beyond Europe. And we know that these recommendations were eagerly awaited in Asia, in Latin America, in the Middle East, in, in Africa, in many parts of the world. So we try to make these as universal as possible. The ESO recommendations are based on the science. We recommend the best of science. If you have access to everything we recommend, that's great. You can treat your patients. If your access is more limited, if you have less tools, less drugs, less tools for screening, diagnosis, monitoring, it's fine. You should be able to find a solution in uh, the recommendations. What do the recommendations say? They are listing the different uh, drug combinations that are available, and for each genotype, they are providing guidance on how to treat patients who are treatment naive or treatment experienced, and patients who have or do not have cirrhosis. I think among the new uh, items in the guidelines was the possibility for diagnosis and treatment monitoring of using uh, the core antigen test instead of HCV RNA testing, if you don't have access to HCV RNA testing. Uh, we have classified the different options, which are uh, considered as equivalent. When an option is in the recommendation, it is equivalent to all the others, and we remove the option that were suboptimal. So for the first time, the ESOL recommendations are interferon-free. We do not have any interferon-based regimen. Uh, and for the different genotypes, we have a number of options. Genotype 1 currently has five options for treatment. Sofosbivir, Lidipesvir, Sofosbivir, Valpatasvir, Ombitasvir, Paritaprevir, Dasabuvir, uh, Grazoprevir, Albesvir, and Sofosbivir plus Daclatasvir. For genotype 4, we have the same five options plus one. Sofosbivir, Simeprevir. The number of options is more limited for genotypes 2 and 3, which may still be problematic. Uh, genotype 2 and 3 have... Uh, Two options, Sofosbivir, Valpatasvir, and uh, Sofosbivir plus Daclatasvir. Finally, genotype 5 and 6 have the same two options as genotype 2 and 3 plus Sofosbivir, Lidipasvir. With this, different durations, different uh, adding of ribavirin or not, and you can really tailor therapy and give the patient the best chance of achieving a sustained virological response. An important point which is addressed in the new guidelines is the treatment of patients with advanced liver disease and especially patients with decompensated cirrhosis in whom treatment is recommended but under certain conditions. And I think one important point here is that the ESO recommendations state that patients who have decompensated cirrhosis and a male score above 18 to 20 should not be treated immediately. These patients should be transplanted first and treated after liver transplantation. All of the other patients with decompensated cirrhosis should be treated and the regimens could be optimized for these patients. Another important group of patients which has been addressed in the new recommendations are the patients with chronic kidney disease. These patients 
are difficult to treat because of the use of sulfabuvir, which uh, is not recommended in patients who have a very low uh, glomerular filtration rate. And uh, the recommendations now indicate that GTAP1 for patients with advanced chronic kidney disease should receive grazoprevir, alvesvir, or uh, ombitasvir, paritaprevir, and desabuvir as a regular treatment. The, the situation is a little bit more complex for patients infected with GTAP2 and 3. These patients can be treated only with a sulfosbuvir based regimen and uh, this uh, needs uh, extreme caution and a very close monitoring of their uh, renal function. The final point I wanted to emphasize from the guidelines is our proposals for uh, the utility of resistant testing and retreatment of patients who failed a, a DA-based regimen. A very uh, strong uh, recommendation of the ESO recommendations uh, 2016 is that resistant testing is not systematically recommended prior to first-line therapy. We do not want to limit access to care, and we know it's possible to treat patients without HIV resistant testing. Just if you optimize treatment, add ribavirin, and or increase the duration of treatment for specific groups of patients who need it in order to achieve high SVR rates, Resistant testing is possible if you have access to a reliable test and the uh, document provides guidance on how to use it. But the most important point is that if you do not have access to resistant testing, you can treat your patients very well from the beginning and achieve very high SVR rates. Finally, we are giving some recommendations on how to retreat patients who failed a DA-based regimen. The difficult to retreat patients are the patients who have been exposed to an NS5 inhibitor. These patients should be retreated with complex combinations. Most of these are off-label and uh, the document indicates which combination can be tested and the level of care and caution that, that should be used. So overall, I think uh, we have done a good job with the panel and I really want to thank all the panel members and thank ESOL for the support for uh, uh, writing these recommendations. You can uh, obviously download these recommendations on the EASL website in the, in the guidelines uh, section of the uh, EASL website and also see the presentation of the recommendation that was made uh, on the 22nd of September with a panel, short presentation of the uh, recommendations and the outline of the, of the new recommendations and then a very interesting panel discussion where the panelists discuss specific issues and also answered questions from the audience and from the live stream from people uh, following the, the session on the internet. So on this, I would like to thank you very much for uh, using the guidelines. Thank you very much for your support to ESOL and, and hopefully we will be able to provide you a new update of the, of the guidelines when this becomes necessary. Thank you very much for your attention.